Welcome to week five, uh, 2013 users. Uh, so this week, uh, we're going to be focusing on more of the design and layout aspect of Microsoft Office. And then in a future class, we're going to take what we've learned here in this tutorial and do custom templates. Um, so for now, uh, this week, we're going to be focusing on these two tabs here, design and page layout. If it'll, if it'll click over there. <laughs> Now, in earlier versions of Word in 2007 and 2010, these everything in here was actually just in page layout. Uh, this uh, split is new to 2013. Um, it is what it is. <laughs> um, so we're going to start in design, head over to page layout, and then toggle back to design for some last little uh, stuff. Um, but so I just wanted to cause your uh, call your attention to these preloaded themes in Word. Um, so right here we've got theme. The, the theme is just the default office theme. This is sort of the default mode office is in. And to the right we have all these preset templates with specific headings and color schemes um, characteristic of Word. And we can see these theme colors here. Um, if we go into home, theme colors um, related to that specific theme um, there. Um, so if we want to change the theme to something, uh, say Berlin, well then it loads up. It's pretty similar, you know, setting and layout styles, um, but the default colors have changed, and over in the Home tab, your theme colors have changed. Um, this is something worth playing around with, um, I'll, I'll, this, especially if you're doing a more creative project. You may want to yeah, play around with some of these presets. Uh, the one thing I do caution you about is that some of these presets, um, they're you know they're not always all that malleable and customizable. So if you want, if you're the kind of person that really wants to just do it all yourself from scratch from the ground up and have a lot of room to really work something yourself, um, you don't want to go with the presets. Um, it just it'll lead to frustration. So we've covered uh, margins and orientations and size a bit already. I do want to uh, show you how to do columns. Um, there are several different types of columns. Uh, so, uh, you know, this right here is considered a one column document. Um, um, you can do two or three. <coughs> you can also um, do some uh, what's called a left column where the text on the right is wider than the text on the left. Or a right column where the text on the right is narrower than the text on the left. There are also more preset columns in Word. Uh, quite honestly, um, if you get to more than three, you're sort of confusing, uh, you know, not necessarily confusing people, but it makes things harder to read. Um, so from sort of a, te a technical standpoint and from a clarity standpoint, you probably want to keep it to two or three. Anyway, um, setting things up into columns is fairly simple. Um, so I'll just, I'll, uh, I'll undo and show you what I did there. So I have my cursor down at the end of this paragraph here because that's where I want my column to go. So I want two columns, and it took that, uh, let's see, it didn't actually um, put the break in, um, but the point is that Word automatically just divided everything into two columns all the way down. I'm like, oh, what if I want three columns instead? Well, there, it automatically did three columns. Um, and this is what the left column looks like, and this is what the right column looks like. Uh, so again, that's that's pretty simple. It's actually um, a little simpler than it was in earlier versions of Word. Um, um, and again, they make it very simple to sort of toggle and, and see what you want to do. Uh, so that's good. Uh, breaks, page breaks. Uh, well, <clears throat> so this breaks tab this is another um, one that's different between uh, 2010 and 2013. Section breaks used to be in a different part in page break. Page breaks used to be in one ribbon and section breaks used to be in another. Now they've merged. Um, to give you a good sense of what's going on, I'm going to actually turn on this um, show hide button that shows our markup. So this document is on, this sample text is two pages, but say I want my page break sooner. Say I want my page to break uh, so I go to break, page, and you see here there's this little bit of um, 
this little annotation that so Word is letting us know there's a page break here. So if I turn this off, it'll go away. Um, but if I want to see where the page break is, it's right there. And hey, we've started on a new page uh, at the paragraph I wanted to start the new page. Um, you can also insert a column from here. Um, and so you could, again, um, start a column break here. Um, but then you do have to, I have to turn the columns on to, to start that. Um, so if it's a single column, it's not going to work. Uh, but this allows you to pinpoint where you want your new column to start. Um, text wrapping, that's not too important right now, actually. We'll cover that more when we work with images, but text wrapping is a way you can set your breaks so they wrap around an image um, and create a more elegant look. But again, we haven't really gone to images yet, so I'm not going to get into that too much. Um, so section breaks. Uh, we are going to cover this more in detail a little later when we do page numbering. Um, it's very important. Um, I do want to clarify, a page break literally is just from one page to another. A section break is a little different in that, so I'll put in a section break right here. Uh, the one you'd probably use most often is the next page section break, in which now we're starting a new section on our next page. So I inserted that section break, and we have this double line here. Um, that's indicating we've got this section break. Um, and s this is good, say, if you're writing multiple chapters, you would, you might want to consider doing a chapter as a section and then the next chapter as its own section. Um, and this, among other things, allows you to um, manipulate certain elements of your document um, without them interfering uh, with, with others. Um, and it's, it's good if you're doing e-publishing to do hard these section breaks like this um, because it, a lot of times it makes it easier to edit things and divide them up into to chapters. Um, so the next page is where it starts a new section on the next page. Uh, continuous break um, inserts this uh, uh, break and starts a new section on the same page. So, so I'll show you what that looks like. Most people, most of my students, do, so you have to put your cursor um, where you want the second print the section break to be continuous and then you, again you have you see this um, mark up here and then we're on a new section. Uh, most of my students don't use continuous section breaks it's just not something that's super relevant I wanted to call your attention to it though. You can also um, do even page or odd page and start your section on the next even numbered page or odd numbered page um, but really, uh, the most straightforward one is the next page, and that's the one most of my students use. Line numbers. Um, so, let's put in some line numbers. Uh, again, I have not actually seen a final project with line numbers before, to be perfectly honest, but for some types of documents, uh, specific, especially legal documents, uh, they do come in handy. So, you know, it's good to know how to do these. So what I did, I just inserted continuous line numbers here. So the first line is line one, and it continues on the next page. Um, extra spaces do count as a line, but if I decrease that space, there's no line there. And it goes all the way to 43. There are 43 lines in the document. Um, but say I wanted to restart the lines on each page. So there are 26 lines on this document, 17 on this one. So I went and just click restart each page. You can also restart each section. Um, so I have um, 43 lines in this section, um, and then in this section I'm going to put in line numbers, and it starts it starts over because it so we put this section break in here, and uh, we've started the new section. Um, <clears throat> so since there's that section break, it started over. So if you wanted to say have if you had a chapter where you wanted all of your lines numbered. Um, and then you wanted the next chapter, all of your lines numbered, but you wanted to start at one, you would do that restart each section. Um, you can also suppress for a particular paragraph. So, I suppressed it for that particular paragraph, and now we jump from 32. Okay, there are no line numbers, and now here we are on line 33. Um, that's fun to experiment with. Uh, you might just want to play around with it, even if it's not relevant. Uh, for your particular project, um, it's just 
uh, worthwhile and uh, worth interesting. All right, hyphenation. Uh, so what is this and why do we care about it? Well, sometimes, um, say, uh, let's see if it's going to work on this one. <laughs> um, uh, so sometimes, and we're not actually having this issue um, with this particular um, particular document, uh, but sometimes, so I put everything in this justified alignment, which means everything here is square, everything here is square, there's no no real jagged edges, um, except when we have these, you know, really short end lines. Um, so sometimes when you do that, um, um, spacing or the spacing between words or the spacing between letters or the stretching of letters, it's sort of messed up. Um, so what you can do is you can actually set things to automatically hyphenate. Um, so, why isn't it doing it? Um, so I'm going to try to type a really long word here. <laughs> this is not a word, and that's... Uh, Okay, there. I got it to automatically hyphenate. Um, so see, it automatically put this hyphen in um, because the word had gotten too long, and it just automatically, again, um, hyphenated it so the reader knows that this word isn't done. It's just continuing on the last line. You can also do manual hyphenation, um, uh, but if uh, you know, um, but I did just want to call your attention to the automatic one. Uh, Indents, yes, and spacing. So indenting. Uh, one way to indent is hit the tab button. Um, that's probably the most common way you've been trained to indent. Um, you can also, though, set your indents in here. So say you want to indent. And this will, so when I put my cursor here and indented one, I indented just, oops, I just indented that one line. Um, but say I put my uh, cursor on the second or third line, Word's going to enter and hit tab. Word's going to interpret that as I want to indent this whole paragraph. Um, if I just wanted to indent that third line, I would have to hit enter and start uh, start over. Um, but you can also place your cursor, decide I want a two inch indentation. And then again, this indents the whole. Um, this indents the whole paragraph. Um, you could, let me show you again, if you hit this little arrow, um, you can actually set up special indentation and just set it up for the first line. Um, and hit, uh, you want a two inch indent there. So there you have it set, so it's doing that huge indent on the first line, uh, but not anywhere else. Um, you can also indent to the right. Uh, we don't indent to the right too often, but sometimes we do. Um, let's do a one inch indent on the right. You can see how that worked. And again, you would follow, if you wanted to just do the first line, you would follow that same procedure special, first line, set it to one inch. Nope. Except it just did it on the left. <laughs> um, I think because it can't actually. Let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, first line, oh, I actually didn't set it to indent on the right, I just set it, if you do this by, it just automatically assumes on the left, so you have to actually go in and do it on the right. Um, spacing. Um, so one of the things I talk about is that um, in your final projects, we don't want um, double spacing, I prefer single spacing, um, and I've had some students ask me about that. Um, you know, they, they worry about readability. Uh, certainly that's definitely a concern. Um, I'm going to put this whole thing... I actually think this whole thing is single space. No, it's not. So I've got this whole thing single space right now. And a lot of people do complain, oh, that's difficult to read, it's weird. Um, and, you know, and if that's the way you feel, okay. So um, 
you can mess around with your custom line spacing. Um, so this is currently, um, and you can mess with it in here. Um, but I actually like to, I really like to go in. So, um, so um, playing with it here really just uh, messes with these actual, these gaps um, between paragraphs. So I, I, it's 18, um, and I'm shrinking it. So it was at 18, I hit the down button and see how this shrinks here. Um, and then it shrinks again. Um, and here at the end, when I'm at the top and I make this go up, see how this text drops in this margin here. So you're really just looking at spaces there. If you actually wanted to, within a paragraph, adjust your line spacing, but um, you know, double spacing is not really going to work. We have these um, at least exactly and multiple uh, settings that we can play with. So at least 12 point, well, uh, let's see. So let's put it at 12 point and see what happens. Not a huge change there. Um, but let's say at least uh, 20 point. Look at that. Um, so that's a little bigger than I'd actually like to see. Um, but it's not as dramatic as, say, a full double space. Try 15 point. So that 15 point, that's a really nice one. You've got some space in there, um, but it's not these huge gaps like you would for a double spaced um, paper. Um, so again, play with those. So I like to use the at least feature a lot. Um, you can also do exactly um, put 15 again. Um, pretty similar. Um, so um, just play around with those and see what you like. A lot of people uh, a lot of good designers really do mess with that custom spacing, and um, it gives that'll give your um, work sort of the the look you want. It's a little more professional. Uh, so let's go back to the design tab. Um, so here we have um, again we can mess with these custom colors and we can mess with our fonts from the design tab. In addition to the home tab, that's something that's new to 2013. Um, this is a, uh, a definitely a new feature. Um, right now I have centered paragraph spacing, um, double spacing, we don't want that, tight, compact, um, and then you can customize it, um, but you can also go and do that um, from the page layout section that we just looked at. Um, so three more things I just want to look at real quick. Um, watermark. So a watermark is um, something that goes on a document um, and it's sort of in the background and you can't uh, can't see it or you you can see it um, <laughs> um, but it makes it um, it's hard to edit those away so it's a way of protecting your documents. Um, And these are just the defaults, um, um, and you can you can look you can look into getting more. Um, uh, most of my students don't need to use these, you know, in in the context of this class, but it's good to know where they are. Page color, use page color sparingly. Um, <laughs> um, page color is great for say. Um, cover art rarely great for your main text it gets really just it can be really distracting sometimes it can be done well uh, with the right project you know colored pages can be good but then again keep in mind also we are focused on publishing to PDF for this class but if you're publishing to print you don't want to be printing colored pages that's going to jack up your expenses um, so in a professional setting you're not really going to be using this too much aside from uh, cover pages um, I'm going to oops, turn off those line numbers because they're annoying me. Um, so page borders. Page borders, again, these are um, these can be fun uh, to play with. Um, don't overdo it, um, but you can mess with them. There are different styles um, in Word. I have this look, we have this nice little border around here. 
again, good for cover art, uh, sometimes good for a project, uh, not always. Uh, experiment, see, I encourage you to um, try to take some risks with this. I really do. Um, just play around. If something's really not working, I will let you know. I promise. Uh, but for now, definitely play with it. Um, see what you like. Um, and as a last note, back in the page, page layout tab, I did not cover this um, arrange section. Um, that's a little more advanced. We'll get to it later. It's not really useful to what we're doing now. Um, but I hope this has given you just some more tips on how to play with design and to create a book. And I look forward to seeing your assignments for uh, the coming week.